that Brand Lindsay has done with me, um, I believe he deserves a round of applause. And you can see that. And, um, you know, working with that group has really helped me to uh, mature and understand the importance of relationships and um, just developing a, a sense of unity in the school. So I thank you guys for what you've done. Um, not just for what you started, but what you continue to do. Really, without you guys, I don't think the school would be what it is today. So thank you so much, EBC, for being here. And um, where we are right now is we're under a great change that has happened in the school. Uh, we've gone from an F to almost an A in one year. Um, and that's because of the hard work of the staff, um, you guys, the teachers, the guidance counselors, everyone here. So. I thank you for your hard work, and everything is just improving. Attendance, safety, uh, fights, everything is getting better. No, the fights aren't getting better. Uh, it's not like it's more entertaining. Um, but everything is getting better um, here at ABC, and I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And um, the mindset that I realize we all have in a school is that no one person is more important than the movement. And that comes from the civil rights uh, movement that something that inspires me. No one person is more important than this group and I, I thank you for letting me serve you because that's why I'm here. And I look forward to the great thing that's going to happen. If and when I get to heaven, hopefully God will say to me, Mary, you've done quite a few good things in your life, but I really like what you did with the high school. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. My name is Johnny Youngblood, and this is a day that I think most of us who are up here would love to break out in tears because all that we went through to make this happen 20 years ago and the difficulty we had, we were literally David's up against Goliath. And we were able to break it and because it was the right thing to do. We, meaning the church, EBC, East Brooklyn Congregations, an ecumenical group of Roman Catholics, Pentecostals, Baptists, Black, Latinos, and Whites, who came together with the same problem to say, this is no time for us to be focusing on our differences. Let's look at what we have in common. So we had in common our children being killed in the schools and not being educated, drugs everywhere, no housing, no jobs, we got together and we made a difference. And you can also make a difference. EBC, East Brooklyn Congregations, we would not have been able to do it without IAF, the Industrial Area Foundation, a professional one of the most marvelous men I've ever met. He, along with a Lutheran, John, Roman Catholic, and a Lutheran by the name of, of, of of John Heinemeyer, and I was just with him in Oxford, North Carolina a couple of months ago with him celebrating his 50th ordination. These men pulled us together, and East New York, Bushwick, and Most of the children here in EBC, our children, were failing. And it seemed like no one cared. It seemed like the children were just set aside. We went over to Bushwick High School one day to meet with the principal to find out why is it that the scores are so low. They showed us the door out. <laughs> Unfortunately, two young men got shot and killed in Jefferson High, High School. I don't know how many people remember that. The next day, the principal of Bushwick High School is calling us, and he's New York. What? They too have a life. They too can become doctors and nurses, lawyers. That's why I got involved with this. Last note, the budget of the school system, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I know it's up there, maybe between 15 and 20 billion.
We're not getting our dollars worth. But mostly for my grandkids and for the other children of this community. We wanted to create a place that would be safe and would show and be a path to progress, to success, and commitment to bring back to this community a sense of purpose. I know as I think about it, or think back, you can't create a school, but look what has been created. And it's all due to the staff here and the people of EBC and of this community. I say this to you, to you young folks out there, because we are old and getting older by the day. Believe, trust in God, trust in your community, dedicate yourself to creating, for not yourself, not just for yourself, but for others, a place of learning and commitment and a place that offers hope. My name is Eneida Lopez. Well, I'm a housewife from East New York, born and raised. A mother of two. And I was at a meeting, a church meeting, where I heard a story where a bank in our community was offering scholarships to our high school graduates if they can pass a test. A very low percentage, if not any, were not able to pass the test. And they said, no, nope, can't offer the scholarships the for, the, for the ability. That got me on the EBC train. I fought for the school because I believe in the young minds of our children. I don't care what your story is. You are able to survive, if empowered, and through education, you can get empowered. And please don't let anybody tell you otherwise. We are smart or smarter. We are wise or wiser. We are strong or strongest when we empower ourselves. I don't remember the hard work that I did because it's like a child. After you give birth, you see it and you forget the pain. I walked into this building. We worked hard and scores of other people. Worked hard for years. Five years of work and planning before the building opened. And you know what the result of all of our hard work was? A building with desks and books, some materials. We built the building. The mortar and the concrete that we're sitting in, yes, we have to build it and deserve a lot of credit. But it was a shell. Then students came. And the heart and the soul of EBC High School was born by the incredibly wonderful and beautiful the opportunity young men to be able to do. And I want to say to the present students, mm -hmm. we almost lost it last year. Don't ever think that what we're doing is good enough. Anything that is created, that is alive, has to be continually renewed and created all the time. When we say we're good enough, we have begun to die. I feel good about the present. I feel better about the future of EBC because of the life, soul, and heart that students have and will continue to give to this school. There have been, there are many here today, incredibly dedicated faculty and administrators who have gone to say above and beyond is such an understatement. You have no idea the blood that was shed, sweat and tears for the students of this school by a faculty who did it for one reason only, they believed their students were good enough and deserved it. That was the reason. I'm deeply honored by just the uh, 
um, being asked to be here. The first recipient of an award this afternoon goes to Miss Genevieve Richard Wright, and her brother will come forth to accept it for her. Workshops, student advisory, for example. I will always have the honor and privileges of serving as the first principal of both schools and one of the founders along with the amazing group of community organizers, clergy, and parents. Jenny would always say that one thing she always felt from everybody that there was a kindred spirit. That everybody was involved from the beginning to now. There was a spirit that no matter what your background was, flowed through everybody involved. And if you're a member of EBC, a member of Bushwick, a member of EPA. Thank you so much, Dr. Reed. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Muchas felicidades en estos 20 años de celebración de esta escuela, la cual tenemos el privilegio de ser parte de esta historia. For me, it's just a wonderful pleasure to be here. I'm just going to tell a quick story of why this place is so important in my life. I came to Bushwick as a representative of the Chancellor to do some work at Bushwick High School. And it was the same kind of story where we needed to do some turnaround work at Bushwick High School. I had a meeting with the principal, and on my way out, I met Monsignor Powers. And he said, if you really want to know what we need here in Bushwick, let me take you down the street. And he told me about EBC. And he said, if you really want to talk about what you want to do, Come on Sunday, and I will give you two minutes, and you can talk to my congregation. And it was a special moment, and from that day on, when I met Monsignor Powers, I knew that my life was changing. The work of doing the policy work that I was doing in the Chancellor's office was no longer enough. And since that day when I met him, I've shifted my career to be working in schools. And I was given the privilege of working here at EBC. And I have to say thank you because I walked amongst giants here. And we are going to bring forth the next person who is standing as many of you have stood and is taking EBC to the next level. We ask our present principal, Mr. Sean, Mr. Sean Brown, to please Um, I don't have I don't have too much to say. I just started. I'm new. Um, I'm just hoping to, to keep the torch going and bring the school to an A. Um, just you know, just a few words, a couple of minutes. Um, came from South Shore High School as an AP. Grew up in Browns my whole life. All my friends are dead and in jail. So everything else that I'm doing is just is a blessing. Uh, you know, I don't speak too much about my religious beliefs in, in the building, but this is a different type of ceremony. Um, God is the reason I'm here. Amen. And that's the only reason I'm going to stay here. It's because of Him. Um, and I try and treat people the way that He wants me to treat them. And I'll stop there before it turns into something else. Because I'll, I'll go into sermon mode, too. Um, I just want to say thank you um, also to Miss Edwards. She's great. She's always here. Uh, she's always giving me advice, and again, she's another person who always teaches me. It's all about relationships. It's all about treating people with respect, and um, and also, you know, the, the students here. I don't know what it is about the kids at EBC High School. These kids are great. Like they're perfect. Everything about them. I don't know what it is. I don't know. About this next woman. I've been teaching for 39 years. And I've had, I've worked under a few principals. But I can honestly say that Miss Shirley Edwards 
is the epitome of what a principal should be. She is a woman who truly is dedicated to our children. She is someone that truly has the heart for the position. And we have all been blessed by her. I am so church and Dave Nelson was there, I learned about private relationships <coughs> and public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in that I learned that I had to understand, even when I was dealing with people that I disagreed with, I had to support them, I had to love them and care for them. I am so ever grateful because the, when you're in purpose, folks, things happen. And Reverend Youngblood told me, because I was afraid to take the job when they interviewed me, and he said, don't worry, anything you need, it will come. So, I don't know whether you know, and all of you know, Anita, even when you get angry and you were trying to get the parents to come out, how it was, it was, I was just happy to be there. I rushed to school and I stayed late. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I can only say this to you, Ed, Laura, Dibner, Gray, Ms. Brown, all of you, you have nobody. Donna, you have no idea how I didn't know what I was doing half the time. <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned from Reverend Youngblood is that you make it up as you go. <laughs> and sometimes that worked for me and sometimes it didn't. I am so happy that I understood what it was to do public service. I know I, I'm so grateful that there was something in me that made me realize that you don't get tired when you're doing God's work or doing the work. I can only say that I thought that I gave people an opportunity to be who they were. They chose teaching. They chose their, these things to do. So I gave them an opportunity to do it. Gray came into my building. She was in corporate. And she became the teacher that when the students, when I wanted to find out where my students, they were in the room. You have no idea when you're in purpose. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes it is. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. We broke every chain. Yes. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. There's an army rising up. And that's what's happening right now. There's an army rising up. Oh, yes, it is. There's an army rising up. Oh, Lord, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. I'm gonna say it again. Break every chain, to break every chain. That's not what I just told them. But I wanted to say thank you, by the way, so much for this. But what I wanted to say for all of the alumni grads that are here, please, at some point. All in, the chains have fell already. I hear the chain, they are falling. Over 20 years now, I hear the chain, they are falling, oh Lord. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain.
secretary. And then she went on and got a master's and now she's teaching here. She also was the first person to start an alumni association for the first four years of the school. And I'm empowered by having her stand here next to me. We're now going to read off the names of the foundation builders. And we have some awards, but not for everyone because of the hour right now. Those names are Mrs. Marisol Cotto. Me. <laughs> Mr. David Jimenez. Ms. Donna Kahlo. Ms. Vernell Lewis. Ms. Digna Lane. Ms. Donna Manley. Ms. Lizette Nieves. They teach you based on your strengths and your weaknesses, so that really helps. Can you tell me what's the name of this function? Hyperbola. Hyperbola. You're not going to forget, right? No. It's a what? Hyperbola. Would you please stand up and say if you have ever had a secret crush on someone? Then why is me? Get in the circle. Get in the circle. Yo, my God, it's a million dollars on this building as part of a plan. Listen to the voice. Even harder to believe for these students at the Bushwick High School for public service. They've been waiting for a school of their own for years. Martin Instead, the they share space with another school in this That's building while they wait for work to begin at the other site. <laughs> Take a look at these hallways. They're so jammed with teenagers between periods, students are inevitably late for class. By the time we get into class, you know, every, the class has already started, so we'll miss out the first you, couple man. of minutes of the lesson. She's on Facebook. And conditions aren't much better once inside this Digital class library, is a library mm -hmm. where cardboard boxes serve as walls. <laughs> oh, Another room intended as a daycare center for the community houses three classes instead. Both of the schools in this building were founded by an organization called the East Coast Foundation. Yeah. These are some of about 350 students enrolled at this school, but that number should be closer to 500. School administrators simply can't admit as many students as they would like because of the space crunch. And that can be a missed opportunity for neighborhood teens to rise above the academic failure of larger area high schools. It's a choice this student was grateful to have. 
I really didn't want to be in a school that he was going to keep that. out his Luis. I wanted some of that myself. Yeah, yes. he's a big, big so fan of the So what's behind the delay? Good sense, out. says the Board of Education. Yo, school officials say they discovered the proposed construction firm for the that job was under investigation for violating the prevailing wage law. Jackie Gleason, for sure, is also known as EBC Public Service Bushwick. The school was born out of a long struggle by faith-based <laughs> organizations, parents, and young people to have a quality school in their neighborhood. In fact, students turned the tide when they argued the case before the Board of Education. EBC Public Service Bushwick is now 10 years old and has 550 students. 85% of the so ninth graders so entered the school under a prepared with limited English language proficiency and math skills. Four years later, the vast majority of those students will graduate and go on to college and career.